Since steam power moved into the factories in the early 1800s, steam has been used as an inexpensive, dependable comfort heating source. The steam is piped to a coil. Low temperature air is then drawn or forced across the coil, and some method is applied to control the amount of heat rise of the air. Historically, there have been two methods of controlling the leading air temperature. One method, called the face and bypass system, uses a series of remotely controlled dampers to mix heated and unheated air, creating the desired temperature rise. This is accomplished either by using separate ducts with dampers for heated and unheated air, or by using dampers to channel air across or around the heat exchange surfaces of the coil. In either case, some of the air travels through the face of the coil and some bypasses it altogether. The main advantage of this method is that it uses constant steam pressure in the coil, making it easy to keep the system relatively free of condensate. There are a number of disadvantages. First, the damper systems can be very maintenance intensive. Secondly, face and bypass systems are relatively costly to purchase and install, and the package is quite large. Finally, the units are subject to temperature overrun or providing higher than necessary outlet temperatures on mild days. The second, the modulated steam system, uses a remotely operated steam control valve to vary the steam pressure to the coil, taking advantage of the fact that a specific steam pressure always yields a precise steam temperature. Throttling the control valve reduces the steam pressure and therefore the steam temperature in the coil, resulting in the transfer of less heat to the passing airstream. While modulated systems are comparatively less expensive and require less space and maintenance than face and bypass systems, they do have one disadvantage. The drawback to this method is that since the steam pressure the coil is modulated, there may be times when the pressure is insufficient to evacuate condensate from the coil unless special measures are employed to prevent this. If condensate is allowed to accumulate, the coil is subject to the three problems most often associated with coil failure, freezing, water hammer, and corrosion. The Armstrong Positive Pressure Coil Controller was designed to provide all the advantages of a modulated pressure control system while eliminating the disadvantages. It does this simply by using a small amount of clean, compressed air to ensure a positive pressure differential across the steam tramp at all times. To fully appreciate the positive pressure controller, we must begin by understanding the origin of the problems it was designed to eliminate. Consider the operation of a typical coil during a hypothetical midwinter day. This coil was designed to use 15 PSIG steam to raise outside air from minus 10 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. In this case, the trap discharges into an atmospheric condensate return system. In addition, there is a thermostatic air vent located at the top of the coil opposite the inlet to aid in air removal during startup and operation. Temperatures near the minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit design temperature are commonly found during winter nights. With this entering air temperature, the system requires the full 15 PSIG steam pressure to provide the 250 degrees Fahrenheit steam necessary to produce a 100 degree temperature rise. Observing the operation of the system as the day progresses, we find that after dawn, the outside temperature warms to zero degrees Fahrenheit. To maintain the required 90 degrees Fahrenheit leaving air temperature, a steam temperature of 234 degrees Fahrenheit is needed. This temperature relates to a steam pressure of 7.5 PSIG, and at this point, the system is condensing 90% of the steam that it would at full load. Later in the morning, the outside temperature reaches 10 degrees Fahrenheit. With this entering air temperature, we need only 218 degrees Fahrenheit steam to produce sufficient temperature rise. This equates to 2 PSIG steam. 
Even with the steam pressure this low, the coil is still condensing 80% of the full load capacity. When the outside temperature reaches 14 degrees, the required steam temperature will be 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature corresponds to a steam pressure of zero PSIG. At this point, the condensate will begin to back up in the piping to the track, called the drip leg, because there is insufficient differential pressure to push it through the trap as fast as it is being formed. The coil is still condensing steam at the rate of 76% of full load. The static head in the drip leg is providing the differential required to drain the system, but any non-condensable gases present are trapped above the liquid seal. Non-condensable gases, especially CO2, trapped in the presence of cooling condensate, are the most common cause of coil failure due to corrosion. Any further rise in entering air temperature results in a lower steam temperature requirement. Since this means lower steam pressure, a vacuum will form in the coil. Although there is no positive pressure, the control valve is still partly open and the coil is still condensing steam. This condensate will back up into the coil and may be added to by condensate suctioned from the return line. Because this is all taking place in the presence of entering air that is well below freezing, the condensate in the coil is likely to freeze. Traditionally, this problem has been solved by adding a vacuum breaker integral to or in line with the trap. Whenever temperatures corresponding to steam pressures below atmospheric are required, the vacuum breaker opens, drawing air into the coil to prevent vacuum formation. When this occurs, the pressure in the coil becomes zero PSIG, and temperature control is achieved as the control valve meters the amount of steam that is mixed with and cooled by the air. The terms air and non-condensable gases have come to be used interchangeably in recent times, especially in discussions about system corrosion. Corrosion in steam systems, however, is chiefly the result of carbon dioxide mixing with cooling condensate to form carbonic acid. Carbon dioxide is a non-condensable gas that is sometimes found dissolved in untreated water. Boiling the water releases the gas. CO2 is more commonly released by the breakdown of the carbonates and bicarbonates that are often found suspended in water as that water is boiled. In the steam system, the concentration of carbon dioxide released from either of these sources can be quite high. Air is the specific mixture of gases found in the atmosphere and has a carbon dioxide concentration which is quite low, only three one hundredths of one percent. With the CO2 concentration that low, air not only poses no great threat of corrosion but may in fact actually displace and dilute any carbon dioxide present in the system, making it less aggressive. Condensate retention and the possibility of freezing become more likely when the same system encounters a back pressure or is required to lift condensate. If the return line is 10 feet above the trap outlet, the static head in the riser of approximately 5 psi must be overcome in order to evacuate the coil. With any pressure below 5 psig, the coil will begin to flood. This means that the flooding will begin at 5 degrees Fahrenheit instead of at 14 as in the previous situation. The classic solution to this problem is to install a second trap called a safety drain upstream of and above the primary trap. As the coil pressure drops below the 5 PSIG necessary to elevate the condensate, a check valve in the return riser closes. When the condensate rises in drip leg to a level sufficiently high to enter the safety drain, it is discharged to an atmospheric drain. Because of environmental and energy concerns, it is best to collect the condensate and pump it to the return system. In some cases, the condensate is simply wasted to the sewer. In either case, the coil is drained free of condensate and is not subject to freezing, water hammer, or corrosion. 
The Armstrong Positive Pressure Control concept uses the same principles already discussed to control temperature in the steam space. Like the vacuum breaker, it provides for the mixing of steam and air in the coil, but does so in a manner that maintains a positive differential across the trap. The positive pressure controller ensures constant fluid flow through the trap so there is no danger of coil freezing or of trapping non-condensable gases. The heart of the system is the controller itself. It is connected to an instrument or clean plant air system. A sensing line downstream of the trap transmits the trap outlet pressure to the controller. The controller provides air to the coil at a preset level above that pressure. If the pressure downstream of the trap changes, the outlet air pressure of the controller is automatically adjusted to compensate, ensuring adequate differential pressure to raise the condensate. Check valves downstream of both the temperature control valve and the positive pressure controller prevent the two utilities from intruding into each other. The check valve downstream of the controller also serves to limit air usage by completely shutting off the airflow whenever the steam pressure is above the outlet air pressure. Air is only used when it is needed to evacuate condensate. When air is flowing, the amount used is very small, ranging from 5 to 90 standard cubic feet per hour. This flow rate is determined by the amount of air passing through the bucket vent of the steam trap. The positive pressure controller uses about as much air as many pneumatically operated thermostats. In fact, the amount of controller air that is absorbed in the condensate is so small, when compared to the average plant deaerator load, that deaerator manufacturers wouldn't consider it in their sizing calculations. By ensuring a positive differential at all times, a system using the positive pressure controller can take advantage of the long life benefits of an inverted bucket steam trap. In this case, Armstrong recommends an inverted bucket trap with a large vent. A large vent allows a constant flow of gases through the trap during operation. A safety drain is an option designed to protect against coil flooding in the case of air system failure. The safety drain trap should be a float trap or an F and T with the thermostatic element removed and its passage plugged. As the safety drain will only operate in cases where instrument air is lost, it may be piped to a sewer without fear of excessive condensate losses. Let's look at the operation of the elevated return system in the demonstration lab with the positive pressure controller installed. Armstrong recommends a controller outlet air pressure 2 to 5 psi above the sensed trap outlet pressure to provide adequate differential. This controller is set to provide an outlet air pressure that is 2.5 psi above the pressure sensed at the outlet of the trap. Using the same temperature profile as we have previously, we assume a minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit starting temperature. The coil is operating normally at the design pressure of 15 psi g steam. There is good condensate drainage, and there is no airflow from the controller. As the entering air temperature rises to zero degrees, the steam pressure falls to 7.5 PSIG. The system is still operating normally. Condensate is evacuated to the return header, and there is still no controller air required. Above approximately zero degrees Fahrenheit, the entering air temperature requires a steam pressure of less than 7.5 PSIG, which is less than the controller set pressure. This lowered steam pressure is insufficient to keep the airflow check valve closed. When the check valve opens, compressed air is throttled into the system, providing sufficient pressure to raise the condensate. Notice that the controller airflow is only 10 SCFH. When the thermostat senses the decrease in leaving air temperature, the control valve is open. As soon as the steam pressure is greater than the air pressure, the airflow check valve closes control airflow ceases and the system resumes normal operation. At no time is fluid flow through the system jeopardized. The Armstrong positive pressure control system offers the cost and maintenance advantages of a modulated pressure heating system while providing constant fluid flow through the system. 
The result is an energy efficient system that will resist freezing under the worst conditions and ensure the continuous venting of non-condensable gases. These facts, combined with the inherent benefits of using an inverted bucket steam trap, make the Armstrong Positive Pressure Control System the best method available to control a space heating system. We believe in the Positive Pressure System so much that it has been made a standard feature of Armstrong's new fresh air makeup unit, making it the most freeze resistant unit available. For more information on the Armstrong Positive Pressure Control, or other Armstrong products, or to receive assistance in correcting your steam heating problems, contact Armstrong or your local Armstrong representative.